to give us a snapshot of Euroshop 2017, we welcome on the stage Global Head of Retail, Retail Technology, Director Euroshop and Euro CIS. She's here with us. Please put your hands together for Miss LK Mobius. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining the Euroshop session. And uh, well, you heard a lot of it already. You might know that this is the biggest retail show in the world, that, that is true. But what you might not know is the fact that Euroshop might be the oldest one, because recently we celebrated its 50th birthday, and now we're looking back to five decades of positive and steady development. And I think the figures speak for themselves. You see it, you can read it yourself. It's uh, nearly 114,000 visitors. We had nearly 1,000 visitors from your country and 2,400 exhibiting companies, only five from India. And I think, allow me this remark here, that India can do much better, as India has really super retail pro, uh, solutions. If you can see, if you walk in Store Asia, for example, you see what India is capable of. And I'm pretty sure that at the next edition of Euroshop, we're going to have a, big, a bigger participation of Indians. And last but not least, speaking about the figures, talk, we talk about the space. We had nearly 128,000 square meters net space. And I stress the word net space because usually the organizers calculate in gross space. That means in Indian dimensions, more or less 13 times the Taj Mahal. I've never been to the Taj Mahal myself, not yet, but uh, I guess it's really huge. And if you multiply huge by 13, you end up with Euroshop. So I'm going to torture you a little bit more with the figures, again, the exhibitors. But it's not all about the numbers. Sure, 2,400 companies is a lot, but what is also remarkable is the fact that these companies came from 61 countries. And talking about the space, I said Indian dimensions, 13 times the Taj Mahal. We Germans are a little bit more conservative. We count in pavilion halls. So actually, we filled up 18 halls of exhibitors. And last but not least, the visitors, as I mentioned initially, 114,000. And they came literally from all around the globe. And that means from 136,000. So Euroshop has a lot of assets. One asset is the internationality. As you see, 64% of all the exhibitors came outside of Germany and 66% of, of the visitors came outside of Germany. And I can guarantee you for the next Euroshop, this percentage is even going up. Second asset of Euroshop is the size. You have seen the figures. And the third asset of Euroshop is the quality of the visitors. What do I mean by quality? I mean that 50% of all the visitors came out of the top management, and thus they are strongly involved in the decision-making process. And one of our target groups, of course, is the retail itself, and 36% of all the visitors came from retail. And you can be sure that each retailer of a certain relevance had the date of Euroshop in its agenda and actually scheduled the visit. And this is just an extract of the visitor brands uh, which were present. So let's talk a little bit about the structure. You've seen uh, the huge dimensions. You've seen that we had 18 pavilions full of exhibits. And of course, this made it necessary that we gave the whole show a structure. And we broke it down to seven dimensions. And I think the best is that I'm going to lead you now to each of the seven dimensions to give you an insight of what is going on. So let's start with the, the biggest one, the most important one, which is in a way the nucleus of Euroshop, the core business. That is shop fitting and store design. And now it's enough with the, with the numbers. I don't torture you anymore, but I show you pictures. You can just enjoy the pictures. And of course, uh, if you walk the aisles, you, you've seen so many booths, huge booths and small booths. You felt like in a theater. They, they really staged their products. And uh, as we know, the success of a store, it's all about storytelling. And if we look here at the booth on the left-hand side, for example, we see the German company Wanzel, who is the world mark leader of trolleys. 
which had a little bit more than 1,000 square meters. On the right-hand side, we, we see the Italian company, uh, Schweizer project. They actually built a, a huge arena that was really outstanding. You should have seen it. And to this area, shop fitting and store design belongs also surfaces and material where you would find basically any type of flooring. What are the big challenges and the big issues in this dimension shop fitting and store design? Certainly, how digital can or should a store be? And how is it possible to have emotions in the store? How is this famous storytelling can be realized in the store? And these answers and many more could be found at Euroshop. Now let me take you to the second dimension, which is lighting and which we had defined as for the very first time as an own dimension because it co grow, grew so big. We had 200 companies on nearly 11,000 square meters uh, in two pavilions who showed many different products from design oriented to highly technological, from general shop lighting up to ex accentual light, accent light. And what are the big challenges and questions in this dimension? Well, there are a lot. I would say there are technological challenges like uh, how can light provide the retailer with indoor navigation? Take the, the example of Osram, who uses uh, beacon technology, or Philips, who works with uh, the codes which emanates of each light. But there are other questions like uh, limbic lighting. How does lighting influence on, on human emotions? And if you know that according to a study in the German-speaking areas, which of course is Germany, Switzerland, and Austria, 56% uh, of all the energy in the non-food retail goes to lighting, then you know, of course, that energy efficiency is also an issue in this area. Let me now take, take you to the next dimension, which is food tech and energy management. That sounds very functional, is it's not really functional. It's also very design oriented. This is a huge, huge area. We had like uh, 200 companies in this area on 25,000 25, square meters space, three whole pavilions, and also a little waiting list. And uh, well, all these uh, refrigeration systems, of course, were relevant for the food retail. And the questions here in this area, of course, is energy efficiency and sustainability. Again, the same study, which uh, I like to, to use, uh, is that, or I says that in the German-speaking areas, 46% of the energy goes in the, in the food retail goes into refrigeration, refrigeration systems. Now let me take to the world of the bright world and the colorful world and the creative world of POP marketing. There you would find any kind of display of digital element, digital signage, of posters, of advertisements, and you would experience highly techno te technological products like holograms, up to real, uh, I would say, uh, artistic dance performances with shopping carts. So everything could be seen there. And what are the challenges? Again, how digital can or should be uh, a display really be? And how much interaction does the shopper really want? And these answers could be found at Euroshop. This is one of my favorites, visual merchandising. This dimension was unique. It was unique because it was highly emotional and creative even though it was the smallest dimension with only 100 companies and roughly 8,000 square meters net space. And well, this area or this dimension is having a hard time. Why that? Because uh, it's marked by many, many bankruptcies and mergers. And the remaining companies, which of course took part at Euroshop, showed really what they were capable of. And if you walked the aisles or when you walked the aisles, you, you felt like being in a theater performance and seeing like 100 acts on the right-hand side, on the left-hand side. It was really unique. And the challenges, issues, and questions in this dimension is certainly how digital can a mannequin display be? 
I remember in former times having seen at Euroshop uh, mannequins with uh, screens. That, so the mannequins did not, have, did not have a head, but a screen. I think these times are over. Now they are rather uh, design-oriented or rather like, like humans. Other question is, how green should a mannequin be? And of course, how is a mannequin capable of creating awareness in the shop? Well, these answers and many more could be found at Euroshop. And now let's slide into the future. The future, which is retail technology. Retail technology is, is the driver of retail. There are so many things happening in there, and maybe it's the most and the fastest moving dimension we have at Euroshop. And I see, or to be honest, the EHI, the European Retail Institute, they see four main trends. One is certainly omnichannel, cross-channel, multi-channel, call it whatever you feel like. Second is analytics. Third is mobile communication. And fourth is digital transformation. If you know that 1.35% of net uh, sales in, in Germany goes to the IT budget, uh, you would understand that this is a lot of money and that increased this budget a lot during the last years. And this ex explains also why this area has really exploded. We had in only in this retail technology dimension, we had like 600 companies on nearly 20,000 square meters net speeds. That would be five times in store Asia. That was really a show in itself. And due to its innovation cycle, which is fast and we don't can't ha or we can't show retail technology only every three years. Euroshop takes place only every three years. Of course, we, this is why we put out that part and stage it as a standalone show, called it Eurosys, and uh, it's working perfectly. So we've done it not for the first time. We've been doing it for like 20 years now, and the next show is about to begin next year, uh, next week, sorry, in Germany. So the biggest challenges in this area, and I think this goes without saying, is how digital should a store be? And how much does interaction does the shopper want? How far can big data, big data go? And how transparent does the shopper really want? But I think the main, the crucial question is, is there a peaceful coexistence between e-commerce and brick and mortar stores? And the answer is yes, a clear yes. And the answers could be found at Euroshop. And now I'll lead you through the last of the seven dimensions, which is expo and event technology, so stand construction. And you might ask yourself, that is exotic. What was the relationship to retail? Why that? Easy, because many of the companies who do the interim architecture, the stand constructions are the same. And they do also the shop fitting. This area has also uh, grown very much during the last years. We had uh, 250 companies there on uh, 12,000 square meters net space. And you can believe me, walking the aisles and seeing these amazing structures, you were kind of stunned. And I was felt like sorry because I knew that after five days, after the show, they would tear down this and that was it. But that's the name of the game. and. Uh, what are the big challenges in this area? Sustainability, of course. Waste reduction plays a huge, huge role. And of course, how can, for example, rules in other countries like the uh, unions in the US influence on the stand construction? And all these answers and many more could be found at Euroshop. So that was actually last Euroshop. Let's look ahead next Euroshop 2020. Uh, is already in full swing, not the show itself, but the promotion for it. So the applications are piling up. I'm counting on you, India, that we get more than five com companies from your side, because I know there the potential is there. The concept of the show is nearly the same, besides the fact that we have added one dimension. We used to have the seven dimension, and we're going to have eight dimension, and the, n the new dimension is all about food service equipment. And that was in a really sh a short wrap up about the show. So you, you're familiar now with the 
world of our Euroshop world. Euroshop is the mother, of course. I mentioned Eurosys at the retail technology show. And of course, we do have InStore Asia, and we are very, very proud to be now together with uh, Vazan Diante and uh, his team, uh, the co-organizer of the show, because we believe that this is a brilliant show and what you can see outside proves that. And last but not least, we have Seastar in our family, which is uh, in China, it's so-called the Chinese satellite of uh, Euroshop, of course, a little bit smaller. But the show is uh, annual and it's doing fine, as we had last time like 8,500 visitors from amazing 43 countries. So it's quite international. And uh, you see here as well just an extract of the brands uh, which were present. So India and uh, China is not that far away. If you are interested in this market, great. Welcome in China. But if you have any questions to me, I be here. I'm here until tomorrow night, and you find me at our Euroshop booth, which we have on the show floor. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>